Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is episode 30. A bit of a deja vu here at the TTC shop as we got yet another new P262 1 Plus HP impact wrench from Ryobi. In episode 22, many of you felt we did the P262 a bit dirty by using a standard 4 amp hour battery, which did perform, but its performance was very inconsistent, sort of all over the place. Something that's not really seen here very often. Being as this is an HP tool, our commenters felt we should use an HP battery. So let's do it. And let's throw in some extra batteries just for the heck of it to see what it takes to topple that Milwaukee Gen 2 mid torque. At the end of this episode, we'll take another look at that ranking chart to see if the Ryobi can improve on its old score. So here we have Ryobi's HP battery, model number P192. It's a four amp hour to match the bargain bin four amp hour pack from episode 22 to see how that stacks up. Besides the HP branding on the outside, you'll notice that the HP packs have these two little pickups on the back. And if you look at the tool, it also has these two terminal pickups as well. This should allow the tool and battery to communicate with each other and let the battery know just how much and when to open those high wattage floodgates. If it works anything like the Octane batteries from episode 24, it should make for a big improvement and more importantly for us, start to see that consistency that we should be seeing. But that P192 is not the only Ryobi battery we have for you today. Ryobi makes a 3 amp hour battery, the P195, with those special sauce 21700 cell sizes. So while the number on the side, the 3, may be lower, as we learned in episode 18 with Milwaukee's batteries, 21700s really deliver the amps at max load. So we'll be using the 3 amp hour pack as our main baseline today because we expect great things from it. Then we'll compare all the rest of the batteries to that field. Speaking of the rest, while we're at it, let's see how other brands of batteries might do in this tool as well. Starting with the XC 5.0 we're using in today's M18 Gen 2 mid torque. With both tools using the same battery, we think it should be interesting. Then lastly, the DeWalt 5 amp hour, that pack as well, just to throw another hat in the ring, so to speak. And yes, of course, with either of these brands, we could have used their own high output 6 amp hour 21700 double stacks, but then we'd no longer really be doing apples to apples and we'd need to start comparing the Gen 2 with high output batteries from episode 18 and then so on and so forth. So strictly speaking, the normal battery size we normally test is just the sort of baseline battery, which is what we're using here. And we're interested to see how those stack up between the two tools. The M18 and DeWalt batteries not having those extra communication pickups that are highly advertised as being so important are another factor we want to see come into play and see if they're a bit hamstringed compared to the fancy HP batteries. So let's find out. At $80, we think the P195 3 amp hour pack from Ryobi is a fair comparison as you can have against this XC 5.0 in the Milwaukee, which Home Depot wants a king's ransom for, but you can usually find them for cheap or free with some purchases. So we're strapping that P195 battery to the Ryobi to see if it can improve on those old power runs that we made and maybe even beat this Milwaukee. The first test of three is five seconds forward working torque. Up first is the Milwaukee versus the Ryobi with its standard four amp hour battery. And here's the Ryobi with the P195 3 amp hour battery. It seems like these tools really like to hit that 337 figure on this test. A one foot pound spread between the three tests, so no real change on this forward five second test. But then again, we didn't really see any inconsistency on this test on its last try. On to what was really causing us to pull our hair out originally with this Ryobi, the 10 second max torque test which is in reverse. Here's how the Ryobi did last time versus the Milwaukee. And now here's with the P195 pack. So 
So impressive stuff from the 3 amp hour pack there. Those 21700 cells and maybe that communication too is helping to deliver enough amps to shoot that P262 up there in the torque really nice and early, just like the Milwaukee does, representing up to 100 foot-pounds of gain on the curve in spots compared to the old battery, ultimately finishing 15 foot-pounds down from the M18, but a big improvement overall from being 60 foot-pounds down with the standard battery. For our last 15 second best case scenario test, we're jumping right into that 3 amp hour pack and seeing how it compares against the standard 4 amp hour in Milwaukee, and then we'll follow that later with the other battery types. So the inconsistent performance on the standard battery pack is on full display here on that yellow line. This was its best run, so some good numbers either way, but you can see it's sort of jumping all over the place. The P195 pack smooths things out really nice and performs nearly on par with the Milwaukee 2962, finishing only 9 foot-pounds under that tool and carries that gap between 5 and 15 seconds. If you own both of these tools, you would be hard-pressed to find a difference in the power there except for its size. Let's remember the Ryobi is a full 1.2 inches longer. Since the Ryobi wasn't able to defeat the Milwaukee here, maybe the P192 4 amp hour battery will have better luck. Let's take a look at how that 4 amp hour battery compares to that 3 amp hour 21700 cell pack. So that 3 amp hour pack here doing its job yet again showing why it's not all about the number on the side of the battery but peak discharge rate and total amps that the pack is able to deliver that determines max power. Making gains early and nearly putting 30 foot pounds on the P192, not a game changer here, but for less coin, not a bad way to go if you're after size, weight, and power. Next up is the M18XC 5.0 using a battery adapter. Let's see how that stacks up. So definitely not a pretty curve there, perhaps the battery flying a bit blind here with there being zero communication with the tool and battery, but we were certainly surprised to see that M18 battery match and beat anything from Ryobi on this Ryobi tool, whether it has communication or not. But even at 444, if you'll remember the Gen 2 made 451 using the same battery, so still not topping the red tool here. This P262 has one last chance. Let's see if with the DeWalt 5 amp hour pack and adapter, it can make it. Now normally we like to have some answers for you guys here, but sometimes the best we can do is humbly provide you this data. These are median runs, as always. Each pack gets three goes, and we saw decent consistency from these. The DeWalt battery on the Ryobi P262 made 461 foot-pounds, the most of the lot, and we're not going to pretend to know why. We've used new and at least two-year-old XC 5.0s on the Gen 2 and haven't seen a huge torque difference there so we don't think it's battery age in this case. But speaking of that Milwaukee, let's throw it on the graph to see how it does versus the Ryobi DeWalt hybrid. This hybrid abomination sees an advantage on fasteners 350 foot-pounds and up, according to this graph, and holds that to the end, making 12 foot-pounds over the Milwaukee tool. Nothing significant, but it's interesting to see. While that's pretty cool and just fun to do in general, the real takeaway we had today on this P262 is 
It's a powerful, consistent, and affordable tool when packaged with this P195 3 amp hour battery. So let's see if the rank list agrees. Now we're gonna put on our crash helmets for this one. Please keep in mind that the rank list is a function of mainly math in this dyno rig's numbers. We have little in the ways we can influence this rank list. So if you get upset in the next couple minutes, take a breath, hug a teddy bear, and address all your complaints to the rank list. We're just servants of it. Starting with the new blank slate, the P262's new numbers get filled in as an update just like the Rigid's did with its Octane battery. So that's 338, 370, and 442. Those results get turned into points here. Then with the new higher best case scenario score, the 7.2 inch length of the Ryobi gets a smidge improvement on those foot pounds per inch at 61.4, but still trailing the Milwaukee quite a lot there. But where it won't be trailing is in the torque claim honesty column. We're testing tightening here, even in reverse, we're not busting any nuts loose. So that 450 claim is looking really good with the Ryobi hitting 98% of that. At $159, she's certainly affordable and gets 41.7 points, which is the most in this category by far, not too shabby. This totals a huge 316.1 and enough for second place, bumping down our beloved Milwaukee Gen 2 into third place. We think it's also worth reminding our viewers that in episode 16, the XC 5.0 did not bump up power with the CP 3.0 high output on this Milwaukee. So putting the three amp hour on that tool doesn't increase its power. Although putting a 6.0 does, but that again is costs a lot more than this three amp hour from Ryobi. So is this Ryobi a better tool then? Well, we don't really decide that on this channel. Everything we talk about is in terms of power, something we're well equipped to inform you about. But when it comes to durability and warranty, eh, it's, it's hard to say. And size, we're mainly working on cars. So for us, that's really a king attribute when it comes to fitting this into spots. You really have to make your own pros and cons list. Either way though, for $159, you have to hand it to Ryobi for bringing the heat on this one, even if they packaged it with the wrong battery, just like Rigid does. Stay tuned as on Sunday, we'll post whether this P262 can take off our semi-truck lug nut on that test rig and what battery really does it justice there as well. If that or videos like this are interesting to you, drop us a subscribe and thank you as always for watching.